Hello everybody and welcome to the next episode of the Corporate Elephant in the Room and today's elephant is we don't know what to do with e-learning which is a crucial topic and I have a fellow Hungarian with me here, Janos, who is um, going to introduce himself and then we talk about what he created. Janos, over to you. Thank you very much for hosting me. My pleasure. <laughs> do you wanna do you wanna tell us a little bit about what you do because you have worked in these standalone restaurants, right? And then you identified the need and the gap in terms of training, um, and basically what you said: okay, get out, get away from all these papers and move to digitalization. And while the idea is really great, implementation is not a, a thing, right? You're speaking of my heart. So yes, I am basically a uh, you know uh, lifetime hospitality. I, I worked all my life in restaurants uh, and bars. I literally completed, I think, all the steps there is. I wore all the hats there is. I used to be bartender, chef, commie waiter, waiter, promoter, uh, club manager, you know, head waiter, assistant manager, all the way up to a, a global training manager for an international hospitality group. And then, you know, basically... Uh, I, I I had a very decent career um, and, you know, obviously I evolved a lot. <clears throat> so, you know, obviously I'm, I would consider myself a very typical guy, I think with a, with, a, with a very typical career. So, as you know very well, nine out of ten manager in a hospitality, um, you know, become manager from a line stock position. So I was obviously one of them. So I evolved all the way up to management and, you know, at some point I realized my true passion, which is training, which is helping people to develop. Um, and, you know, finally, uh, about five, six years ago, I, I got a chance um, to be first a trainer for a, for a standalone restaurant group. <clears throat> and then eventually I got a global role. And obviously, um, you know, it was, it, was a, it was a hell of a journey. You know, I, 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 I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about basically the whole, the whole training field and L&D. See, again, I was one of those who, you know, when you get a promotion, suddenly you need to do something completely different out of your comfort zone, out of, out of what, you, what, you, what you used to do before. So, you know, back then I started with, um, you know, developing beautiful training materials and everything and, you know, trying to come up with things that I thought back then that is going to engage people. And then obviously, you know, after a year or two, I, I realized it is, it is absolutely not working what we do. You know, even though we used to create beautiful training manuals and training content and everything, nobody ever read them. Um, and then, you know, I had to, I had to look into ways um, to, to get a better engagement from employees. So I had to, you know, kind of put my ego on a side. I had to kind of say, you know, actually, maybe I'm not as good as I thought I was. Um, and then they look for new ways. And this is how actually I started to develop a digital training platform. It started off, it started off as a training platform and eventually it, it grew into a communication platform that we, you know, specifically designed for restaurants, bars and hotels. We were only focusing on FMB. Um, but it, 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 was, it was quite an organic journey to, to get um, where I am today. Uh, you know, I always like to tell people I didn't wake up one day with a mindset of, okay, let's just, you know, make money out of something. I worked in hospitality all my life. Why not monetize on something? No, not at all. You know, I, uh, I started to develop um, uh, a, a training platform as an employee. Why? Because I looked around on the market and I realized there is a massive gap in terms of uh, what's, the, what's the current offering for restaurants. And I realized there is a massive need for that. See, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 43. Uh, obviously, you know, I think I think we will touch the point of different generations, millennial, Gen, Gen Z, you know, uh, things are changing. And, you know, I, I, I really feel that we this industry is still um, filled with dinosaurs, you know, filled with people are stuck in the industry. No, I, I wouldn't say too long because I think I think that's good to, to stay in, in, stay in, the, in the industry for for life and, and, and for many, many years. But we need to evolve. We need to adapt. And. You know, while every industry is digital apps and, 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 and drop boxes and, you know, things that are the natural part of everyday operations in FMB. But, you know, this must change. You know, it is, it is I think, a very natural thing to, to look into new ways uh, to do things because, um, you know, this is the industry that is bleeding from a thousand wounds. I mean, there are um, places opening left, right and center. Some of them are closing down like there is no tomorrow. So... It is an industry that really needed a revolution. So basically, I ended up 
um, developing Pocket Trainer after a initial success as uh, as an employee developing a platform uh, for for a, for a single restaurant group. So you know, I I, I saw the impact it had on the business, and I decided, you know what, I probably could do this um, for the whole industry, not just not just for one restaurant as an employee. And I, you know, uh, took a deep dive into uh, the unknown. Uh, I took a bit of risk, but I had a, I had a tremendous support from from many fellow colleagues um, uh, who helped me to, to to get the business going. And and here I am today. You are today in twelve countries and God knows how many restaurants, right? Ah, so you should be so so proud of yourself. And and I really love your your application. And the reason I love. Which we, we will talk about it later on in terms of relevance and specific content. And sometimes we go for generic content rather than, you know, what we actually need. And that's one of the reasons people are not using e-learning or any kind of learning material because they can't apply it. You know, having an information or having information and apply it is a separate skill. Sometimes people, and most of the time, we don't have the time to work things out, to think about, to ponder on. And sometimes what, what we need, tell me what I need to know and what I need to do. Don't give me the, the generic version and then I need to adopt and apply it to my own. own. That's, just, that's just not, especially f and It's very, very specific given the concept, given the food that you are selling, given the service style, right? So, but before we go there, let's just talk about... What do you consider, what do we need? Let's say somebody wants to go through, and I agree with you, we are not digitalized at, uh, at all. We have LMS, but <laughs> that's, that's not what we, what we need. And yeah, we have hundreds of WhatsApp groups that nobody looks at them because it just gives you headache and, and stress. But if restaurants, <laughs> yes. So your restaurant background and my hotel background, I think we have the same. I mean, might be a different industry a little bit, but the same behavior observed through our conversations, I have noticed them. So let's say a hotel or a FMB department in the hotels or in the large restaurant groups decide that, hey, we do need some sort of training structure. Or, or an application or a digital platform way of training people. What is it that you would consider or want them to consider before even embarking on that journey? There's a lot of things to consider. So, you know, I think now, by now we reach the point where every business leader, even the, the junior management recognize the need for digitalization, right? Everybody, training is something that everybody wants to do. You will find no organization on earth who will say training is not important. Yet, it is always going in the end of the priority lane, right? Because if you ever worked in a restaurant, you know that is everything always changing, right? Depending on the style of your restaurant, depending on, I don't know, the, the weather, which country you are, um, COVID, no COVID, uh, Brexit, no Brexit, you know, there is, there, is, there is always a lot of things going on in a restaurant. I never worked in my life in a restaurant that was fully stuffed. Never, not once. You never reach the point where you say we are hundred percent stuffed, right? So obviously, you know, training is a extremely important thing because the the lifeline, uh, the, the 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 health of the business is really depending on the the knowledge and the efficiency of the staff, right? People need to pick up knowledge very very fast, right? They, because you know, essentially, the the, the business losing money. In the, in the initial onboarding period, right? So you onboard somebody in two weeks or two months, it really matters because essentially during this time, you, you're losing money on the employee and, and, and you're losing face in front of the guest. People don't know if you serve Coke or Pepsi, right? Basic stuff. I'm not talking about dish, dish descriptions and, you know, <clears throat> uh, real, real deep knowledge. So when you implement an LMS system, I think you really need to look at the organizational, uh, you know, structure, um, how are we going to do that? What do we have, right? Do we have anything? Do we not? But either way, you you're have your, uh, your, your training content on Excel sheets and Word sheets and whatnot, um, or you don't have anything. Um, I, th I think it's very important to, to decide, okay, how deep we want to go into. So, you know, actually, there is, there is, I, think, I think there is a difference between hotels and, and, and standalones because standalones tend to um, focus more on on their own content, they they want to share their own food descriptions and cocktail descriptions. Whether hotels, in my 
personal experience, they tend to go for generic stuff, right? They they happy to to get a you know training courses and content which are recorded, God knows where, and you know it it, it gives a guideline because you know all this um, they need they need a lot more content than than an individual restaurant would would, would need. So usually. To my experience, hotels like to go for big platforms, internationally recognized, mm-hmm. because it is not just about providing the training, but it's also who we're working with, look, big logo, you know. Restaurants, they tend to focus more on their own knowledge. Um, so once you look around of the selection of, you know, uh, uh, options, right, whether you want to go for a, a training course provider or whether you want to go for an LMS, this, these are, I think we can touch this later on. I think I think it's important to choose something that is suits your business, or if you want flexibility, you know, and, and and if you really want to push your own content, then you actually really need to do your market research because there are very very limited options to to what we do. So you know, just to touch base a bit, you know, how I I, I try to be differentiated from any other platform. We are not an anonymous platform. We are a platform that is enabling restaurants to share their own content. We'd be focusing on enabling restaurateurs to share their own content fast and easy from mobile, as simple as it is. We also provide content now because there's a massive demand for it, which, you know, I, I underestimated in the beginning. But I think it's very important to look into, okay, what do we have? What do we need? Who is going to look after uh, other platform after it's, after it's, uh, after it's launched? Mm-hmm. Yes, I think it's where we make a mistake with e-learning. It's really, we don't understand the structure and in learning generally. I was just talking to somebody the other day. Somebody asked me what why learning is not working in the hotel industry, right? And maybe other industries as well. And I also realized, and I was just drawing literally on a piece of napkin in a in a bar. And I'm like, look, nobody knows. We have never had this outlined in the hotel. I mean, I never been told. I need to figure things out, and I love doing that. But we never been told. Who is responsible for whose success? Basically, whose training? And I imagine that literally as an organizational charts, we are very good at that. We have 150 organizational charts in every organization, right? But we never have had an outline similar to an organizational chart. The who is responsible for whose training within that department, within that company, within that organization? Because I think without that clarity, it also contributes to the failure of learning because it's just so overwhelming, right? Let's say I'm the head of department. I have 150 people. Oh my God, I can't train 150 people. Yeah, but you don't have to because you have your layers, right? And if I'm a supervisor, if I'm a manager, restaurant, bar, whatever that I am, okay, I have 10 people. Can I train 10 people? Fantastic, I can do it. So people will have that urge. So structure is definitely missing in terms of who is responsible for whose success. And also, who is going to implement it? We have implemented LMS here in Middle East and Africa, right? 35,000, 40,000 people. And it was, it was chaotic because some areas like Dubai hotels, they picked that up very quickly. Some ruler hotels, they had no idea, so they needed a very close attention how to implement it, how to even log into the systems. And and after that, it's really, who is going to drive it? Because it needs, needs driving. Most of the time, and I know, and you know as well, hotel companies here in Dubai using one of these very famous online provider, training provider, and three years, nobody even looked at it. And when you ask the L&D director or the, the, the leaders that, yeah, we have that, but we, you know, nobody is using it. But we, do, we did our job. We did our job because we provide an LMS platform, right? So, yeah, that's, that's um, see, uh, it's a very interesting question. See who is running it. I think, I think very often, um, you know, the problem lays in, in not a corporate decision. If, if, if I, can put it this way I, I don't mean the classic corporate structure I, I mean a collective decision of a group of leaders who's made these decisions so you know usually there is one or two or maybe more people in an organization who um, you know realize the need for uh, an LMS platform so they want to implement it but many people are mistaken that 
you know, when they think, okay, we get a, a learning and management or a communication solution to the business, they think, okay, now we've done that, we implemented it, we paid for it, it is done, right? It is sorted an issue. It is sorted our learning and development issues. What they don't consider that you basically bringing a tool on board. Training, it is something that you must do as a FMB professional at some level. You can do it on your own if you are lucky and then you are super skilled and you have the time or you can spread across the head of departments and ideally you do it collectively get together. So essentially when an LMS or a communication platform come on board, they offer you, okay, you do this currently on pen and paper and PowerPoints and printing it out and WhatsApp groups and, and, and whatnot. We offer you the chance to do this smarter, faster, uh, digitalized on millennial standard. So essentially, we want to save you time. We want to save you money. We want uh, to, to, to look in front of your employees that somebody actually who you know, provides something cool, right? But we're not going to do the job. You know, we do the onboarding. We upload all your content. We do the management trainings. But then you still need to run it. You know, we, we never promise that we're going to change your life. You know, I always... I have this conversation often uh, with, with our clientele. You know, now we, uh, you know, working with, 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 with more than 10 countries. I don't know how many restaurants and, and hotels. And we have two types of clientele. You know, I, I always say this to everybody. We have two types of clientele. The one using the left, the, the, the platform, left, right, and center for everything. And the one you're not using it at all. The platform is the exact same, right? The only difference is the management. It has to come from the management. So, you know, when the, when, when the leader of the organization uh, committed to it and, 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 you know, put a bit of pressure on, on the management and, and, and the management obviously rolling down this pressure to the employee, it, it is works. Because the bottom line is an LMS is a work application. You don't go there to have fun. We can talk about gamification and we can develop all the fancy features. It can sing a song, you know, people telling me why it's not like this, you know, this, this is our day. Why, why is not doing that? And very often it happens that we develop functions for people that they are, you know, they, 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 they almost put me under the bus. If it doesn't have this function, we're not going to use it. And you develop them the function and they never, ever use it. Never. So end of the day, right? It is a tool. You, you, you still need to use it, right? As you, you know, ordering, I don't know, printer or for the PDQ machine. And as you, I don't know, ordering plates and food for the restaurant. This, this, is, this is something you, you still need to put in practice. And I, I think it is very important not to consider uh, an LMS as a solution. It is a solution, yes, if you're using it, right? But it's not going to sort your problems out. If your management is lazy to do trainings and they don't invest half an hour a week, you know, I always tell people, invest half an hour a week. I don't, don't hire an extra training manager. Don't hire, you know, if you have an, a training manager, amazing, right? If this, this platform can be wonder. But... Ask your management to, to invest half an hour or 10 minutes a week. Do a new quiz. Uh, make sure your cocktails are updated. Make sure your, your selections are, are there. Make sure everything is updated. Because, you know, employees are, you know, not as, uh, not as careless that many leaders tend to, tend, to, tend to highlight. People say, you know what, but employees don't, don't care. They, they don't use it. Of course, they don't mm. use it if you don't put content them uh, to, to interact with. Why are you going on Facebook? Why are you going on Instagram? Because there are always new pictures. There is always new information, right? If you never put any new content up after the launch of the, of, the, of the LMS platform, if you don't put pictures of the stuff, silly things, people are not going to go. Why would they go? Now, we also see an organization who, who really, you know, trying to do things on, on the millennial standard, posting pictures, taking funny things, uh, rolling mm -hmm. out new pieces, adding new courses. You know, the engagement is incredible. People, you would never think people go and do a hundred quiz and, and, and they really competing with each other. Of course, not everybody going to do that. You know, make no mistake. You don't have only superstars in a company. You know exactly some people coming to, to, to take their salary and there is nothing wrong with that because you cannot promote everybody anyway. But you will have people who will, you know, Come and learn. See, I, I read an interesting comment about they, they did a global research mm. on the number one reason of, of people leaving companies and the number one reason people joining companies. And it's the same reason. It is development opportunities. People nowadays coming into the business and asking you the question, how am I going to be a general manager within two years? You know, this is how people are coming in. They go on the job interview. They know that 
if this company don't take me, I'm going to have a job tomorrow because I'm going to go to 10 more interviews today. There are, there are so many jobs available. And what everybody offers, salary, accommodation, transportation, here in the UA, they offer, uh, you know, visa and life insurance and health insurance and whatnot. I'm sorry, everybody offers that. What what else do I get? People people now, they think this day, mm. what else do I get apart from salary? Everybody give me that. What, what do you give me? Do you, do you have a, a food Bible as much? You know, just just as, as, as basic as a food. Do you have a food Bible? And people go, oh, we have fantastic training materials. And then you join. And then you realize that okay, I have a I have a printed word sheet and and you know it's ten pages and you know uh, full of full of uh, spelling mistakes and stuff. This this is your training and off you go. That's your section. Take your order. So it is a bit tricky. I think I think it's very important for for companies to consider that you know it is a tool that is going to save us time, money, and effort, and you know we can do things better. But it is not going to sort the issue of of, of training. A, a platform is not going to train people. Is 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 not a human, right? It is a fantastic tool. But you still need to put the, the the effort in it to 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 make it work and 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 you know make the difference between between your company and, and the one next door. Somebody's got to drive it, right? There is no other way, and that is the line manager. So I always said, and last time I even wrote something on LinkedIn, the future of LND, and obviously it's you know you it's, it's very broad, but it's really training people how to use their available resources, how to think. And how we manage those, the uptake of resources, because what I hate with L&D, and I know this, I mean, if somebody wants to deny that, I come and speak to you. <laughs> because what L&D does, oh, here is my fantastic report. You know, everybody completed two, three online training this month. I'm done. My job, you know, I'm very valuable. And I always say, I want to know what people, the level of their knowledge, their expertise, their competence. I'm not interested in your reports because this is nothing to me. And, you know, once I, I had a back and forth with an LND, very smart LND person, and she says, look, we have completed hundreds and thousands of hours of learning. I'm like, well, it can give me two information. Either you guys are really good at facilitating training people, the uptake is really good. It can also tell me that your workforce is really incompetent and it needs that amount of training. So she backed down very, very quickly. So the number of training, it doesn't tell anything. What I um, wrote in that article that the future of L&D is not making training mandatory, is making competence mandatory. And I think that's a much better approach because how I would use, let's say I'm, your, I'm, your, I'm a restaurant manager and I was given your application, right? And this is what I would do. And we had some similar application for our loyalty program. Never really worked. People don't like it. The application is, is, is very annoying. And as you said, there's a lot of gamification. And I knew the content inside out. And I picked up mistakes in the content. That's how much I know. But then I got lost. I'm like, this doesn't make the whole thing sense. So it has to be very well structured for people to understand and easy to use. But how I would use your application, let's say if I'm a restaurant manager, I would say, send out a message, notification. There's a new information on that. And then I just tell my staff, guys, we're going to talk about it during the briefing because briefing is the perfect time. Take every day five minutes. Everybody will be super trained, but we don't, what we do, even when we start doing it, because my guys were doing it and they were really, really good at that, I have to say. But even that is, you know, during briefing, everybody switches off. So it's not that you give the information. You guys go and find the information, learn what is new, what is new about that cocktail, what, what change happened with that dish or whatever it is. And you tell me during the briefing. So I'm not going to give you. So what I'm going to do, I test your competence, your knowledge. I'm not going to give you one-to-one, -one, right? These are the basic information. But what I'm going to give you that, hey, something happened. I will provide you the information, but you need to go and find out. And that's how I would use online learning. Because you cannot just dump it on the employee. Oh, it's dead. Go for it. If there is no accountability, you know, Nobody is going to go. If nobody is checking on us, that's why we say if it's not measured, nobody gets it. It doesn't get done. So measure learning, not the learning uptake in numbers. Nobody cares about it and says nothing about it. Absolutely. I think, you know, uh, it's, it's, 
I always say that you know I think I think digital management you know of of, of your stuff or or, or e learning is meant to give an extra dimension to to the to the to the business that you already do right. So again, it is it is not going to replace a human element. Make no mistake, you know. I think you can put uh, the the learning journey or or the competency of employees to a different level of e-learning. It is an additional tool in your in your in your box, right? What you're using as an LM, as, as, as any manager. As you said, you know, briefing is the perfect time. You know, we in in any restaurant, the, one of the the number one um, uh, you know complain about training why don't we do training because we cannot get the stuff together you know they don't want to come on the day off it is their break it is you know there is there is always something and it is absolutely right you know i i i never wanted you know when my management told me listen people don't want to come on the day off it's like not a problem then you repeat the same topic three times and you make sure that the rota is matching your your training and then you know you do it three times it's good for you it's good for them it is it is it is good for everybody yes it's extra work but this is an investment in in your team, in your business, in your in your own uh, you know in your in your own development as well, because this is people going to perceive you as you know what is actually know what is he talking about. So briefing is the perfect time. But who told you not to actually run a, a quick quiz after the briefing? What you talked about, you need to reinforce knowledge. is very important. See, we um, back then we we set up a a, a global system. Uh, we, we we called IDP Individual Development Planning for every department. So back then, I imagine I I went totally crazy in my first year. I I, I set it up over uh, ten to fifteen training for each department in a restaurant, and then each training was repeated four times a year, and they were coming with a big evaluation in the end. So we repeated the trainings four times a year. So everybody could take decide which, which training they come on. And then eventually um, uh, a test was coming with it. And then even the yellow bonus was accordingly with it. So it was a fair system. You know, we provide training. Uh, you have an evaluation in the end. You you perform, you you, you show you care, you, and you want to provide a good service for the, for the class. If, if, if not, not. So we were doing this for two years. And then at some point, you know, I, I went on a global role. I didn't have executives. I didn't have anybody to help me there. The management didn't really... Uh, modify the questions and they said you know what Janos we um, we don't want to do this uh, anymore we're gonna we're gonna stop it because we are doing it for two years everybody knows everything the results were getting better for the sort of compared to the first year the second year the results were better so the third year um, they they decided okay we're not gonna do this instead of just you know adding new questions and new training they said we're not gonna do that because everybody knows everything so I was very curious I was very upset with the decision but because I was opening three restaurants a year I didn't have time to to, to, to to check on you know what's going on but at some point i i got back to my center i had a bit of time i was like okay guys we're gonna do a, a, an evaluation of the entire stuff so i rolled out an evaluation of knowledge and it was worse than the first year and the, here we talked about stuff that working for the company for four years so what does it say did they go dumb or you know people simply forget people simply forget the information that's why it's very important to provide information and you know the stuff uh, you know, was defending themselves that, listen, we didn't have a training for a year, uh, to be honest, yeah, I forgot, and information is not available. So I think when it comes to e-learning, that the main uh, takeaway that the management should think about, that with e-learning, you are providing information for the staff so they can learn in their own chosen time, right? Because so far in the industry, people were relying on physical trainings. You had to come on your day off or stay in your break or, or God knows when. You had to go and sit on a training after your lunch shift when you, when you did 180 covers and then, you know, you just, just want to eat. You want to go on your phone for five minutes finally. You want to go to the toilet and you're sitting on a training. So that was your opportunity to learn. With e-learning, you can actually provide information to the staff so they can decide on their own chosen time. Okay, I'm on a bus in the morning. I'm sitting on a toilet. I'm going on a beach. I'm going to go through very quickly so they can decide when they want to learn, because giving people, uh, you know, uh, pieces of papers and books, it doesn't fit in your pocket. Where do you put it? You know, uh, a management, uh, you know, I have a very nice bag, you know, uh, the bag is always with me. I, I can put stuff in it. The line stuff, they, they, they don't carry bag with them, you know, they, they carry their apron and, and their food and whatever, right? So I think 
you know, it's very important to consider e-learning as a, as, a, as, a, as a great audition that can, you know, provide an actual layer to the arsenal of, 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 of teaching people. It is basically give the staff the opportunity to learn whatever they want, right? Are they going to take it or not? That's an entirely another question. We can talk about, again, how, okay, you know, how far the management should go to, to push this. Should people learn by themselves? Yes, they should learn by themselves. This is your basic idea. But if you've ever been a waiter, you know, I, I know how I was when I was a waiter. I, I wasn't on a mindset as I am now. I had fantastic leaders who developed me to the to the point of, you know, what you want to do with your career. You, If, if you want to learn it, people want to see that you want to do it by yourself, you know. But not everybody's on this level. Some Some people never will be on this level because they don't want to. Don't blame them, you know. Uh, but some people can be on this level, but they need tools to succeed. We, as a management, we need to provide tools to succeed. What kind of tools are they? Are, are they? It's your own decision, you know? Yeah. Oh, no, absolutely. Let me just come back to the whenever you want the, the e-learning, because that's that. And I wrote about it, I think, this week. And I think this is one of the greatest problems that we had with e-learning. Because it, it came out, when it came out, especially these applications, you can use any way you want. So the message for me is do the learning related to your job in your private time. And I always said, absolutely not. Now, if you want to use it, like, like do it. Of course you can. But I think what companies don't do is dedicate time for learning. So let's say, you know, you have a module need to go through, right? And even in restaurants, especially restaurants, standalone restaurants, it's so easy because you have time before your shift, in between, sometimes, you know, we close the restaurant, et cetera, et cetera. It's literally sit down, guys, for 10 minutes, read through that, log into that application, go through it, and then the next 10 minutes, or together 20 minutes, we discuss yeah. it. And that's it. Now, if you ask me, and, and sometimes even my company, we had like hours and hours and hours and hours of long training, mandatory training, and nobody ever said to us that you have 10 hours of training that you need to complete online, mandatory. How are you going to schedule the 10 hours during your working hours? It was just literally get it done. And if you are smart, you do it your working hour, during your working hours. But if you are not smart, because nobody actually talked to you about it as well, right? Then you're gonna end up doing it at home, on the bus or whatever. But then if I need to do, if my manager tells me, oh, do it on the bus, do it during your lunch break. How much of a value do we credit to training if you tell me, do it on the bus? Like, my brain is is, fun, uh, is is focusing on so many different things that's happening in the environment. There is no learning there, I tr uh, trust me, right? So we need to be very, very careful. And if people want to, if managers want to take uh, online learning seriously, then we need to dedicate time within working hours. And we need to stop this message, do it at home, do it at your own convenient time. Yeah, I think I think this is a very 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 good point, and and it is very typical. Um, I I completely agree with you. You know, uh, one of the main selling point, you know, even even you know what 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 we pitch is that information available at any given point, which you know for employees that you know I think I think want to grow. You have these always this ten to twenty percent of superstars in the company. I think for them it's, it's fantastic, but my message is not you know. You know, we're giving an extra tool to to make people uh, work for free because basically you're working for free when you when you when you when you're studying on a bus or, or whatever, right? This is not the message. I think again, I'm coming back to the same point. So you know, providing an LMS platform to the staff, it's a great way also for the company to show that you know what, actually we we care. You know, we're giving you a, a tool to succeed. We're giving you some tools to succeed. You want to take it or not is up to you, right? But again, I think a, a company's image can go a long way by, you know, providing time for for learning. And it is not just providing time for learning. I think L&D and, and, you know, uh, thinking about development of people, it should be taking a, you know, very important part of every business. You need to sit down, even if it's once a year, and think about, okay, guys, what do we do for trainings? What are the obstacles, right? What are the problems? 
is the LMS working? Is it not? Why not? Do we need to put, do you have time as a bar manager? Do you have time to actually sit down and update all your cocktails or, or create new pictures? Are we waiting for the marketing department? What are we waiting for? Why are people not using it? How about if we tell them, listen, um, actually, we, give, we pay you an extra half an hour a week. I'm, I'm saying something ridiculous, right? Let's say an hour. But, you know, since a lot of companies run by finance, let's give a half an hour a week. You know, I'm just saying something. But if I, I promise you, if you tell an employee, listen, uh, Friday, you're coming, you're starting at 10. Um, actually, you know what? We, we have a late lunch on, always on Friday. So come at the same time, but spend the first hour, all of you, to discuss topics, you know, go on your LMS, go on your on your on your pocket trainer or whatever, study something. We give you an extra hour. People will appreciate it. You know, you will come across as a company who really care because I tell you something. You know, a company buy you a, a, a platform like like pocket trainer or or, or any LMS, right? Um, and then you know, the management can suddenly say to the CEO, look. I did my job right. If, if the employee is not learning, it's not their fault. But the employees are talking. You know, employees are not stupid. They're going to say, you know, they, they bought the system and they're never going to touch it. We're never going to use it, right? Now, if you combine this with the with the, with the the genuine effort of management say, you know, listen, guys, we bought you this platform. We actually provide you an extra hour a week so you can learn about anything you want, okay? Use this time. We created you some quizzes. You know, we uploaded this. Do you want to take a part and maybe we, we, we update the, the dish descriptions because the allergens are not, you know? And then you will be surprised how many people will suddenly start to learn, how many people will suddenly start to implement this knowledge, you know, and, and, and how are people going to talk about it? Because, you know, I'm working with a lot of companies. You will be surprised, you know, I very often, when I finish my pitch to, to the decision makers in a company, I very often go and, and grab a coffee in the bar and I like to ask the stuff, you know? What you guys doing? How's everything? And then you would be surprised how quickly the stuff throw the management under the bus. Like, pff, man, you have no idea what's going. You know, you see the real, real stuff, right? But I also see with great organizations that how highly they speak. And then you know, you go there and when I ask them how long you're working here for, and they say I'm me for twelve years. You know, and 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 I have goosebumps and and ask him like, man, what 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 made you stay here? And they're gonna say because because people care about me, you know. Maybe, yeah, I grow slow or, or, or I developed, I had opportunities, but uh, I feel appreciated. You know, people feel when you care about them. It is the same when you buy a girlfriend or your boyfriend, you, you, you buy an expensive present, but you don't care about them, right? People know this, you know, they're not going to love you more because, because they buy you an expensive uh, a bag. They're going to take the bag, right? Like companies say, okay, okay, we take this LMS, they're going to take it but they're not going to feel appreciated. So I think it's very important to, you know, spend time and and just as you're talking about how to bring guests in, right? We're always talking about what can make instant money. How, how do we get more bookings for brunch? How do we push ladies night? Nobody coming, you know? How do we get more guests in? How do we, how do we, how do we? We're talking about everything. But in fact, I always believe this, that, you know, the only thing you should talk about is your stuff, how to give them tools because they they running your business. You as a manager, you don't make any money. You as a manager or as a CEO, you don't make a single penny for the company. You don't make any money. Your job is to make decisions that's going to enable the stuff to make money for the company. The stuff is the one has to stand in front of the guest. And, you know, this inner feeling inside them, I'm, I'm appreciated or, I, or I'm provided the tools or not. It is, this, this is what they reflect, reflect on the guest. And I know myself because I've been an employee for a very, very long time. You know, I, I, I went through from, from food, I started as, as a food runner in Dubai, right? And I always say that, you know, I, I didn't grow to where I grew because I am anything special. I grew because I was provided the tools to succeed and I had the, I had the support and, you know, I, I saw how is a good company work and, and, and I see many other companies where, you know, they, 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 they don't invest one hour a year one hour a year, you do a yearly meeting, guys, what do we do for training? And, and, and they're really talking about, okay, what, what's the problem? You know, do we, do we abuse the stuff? You know, do we, do we expect too much? Do we, do we throw money out on the window? You know, just, just paying for platforms and, and, and buy all the fancy stuff, but why are they not using it? It, it takes an effort. It takes an effort from the management to think about, okay, 
uh, how do we actually implement this or, 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 or put this to the next level? How do we put this in, into gear? Oh, absolutely. And there is no zero thought put into this kind of plan. There is no, I often see it, lack of planning, lack of knowing your audience. Is my company last year, it was, I, I just laughed because we, then a new director, academy director comes or, or a higher manager. And obviously everybody wants to show that they do something. And then they implemented one of these big platforms learning. I'm like, this is the worst thing you could have done, especially to this region, but old content, very generic content and nobody is using. And they, we were on a webinar trying to sell it to the hotels. Why we already have an LMS and why we have an LMS system that we developed and the hotels themselves, the tool actually would be great um, because the hotels themselves can upload content specific to that. But no, let's go out and buy something so generic that nobody can apply. And why? Because, oh, it's a, it's a fancy name. Yes, but nobody is using it. So I think decision makers in that needs to be held accountable, accountable because, you know, buying these fancy platforms just doesn't cut it for them. And since we are talking about this, what are the challenges that you are facing when you are dealing with companies in terms of, you know, when you are presenting your application uh, and you're pitching, the, pitching the, the, the product? What is it that they are opposing? Because this is always, for me, a very interesting conversation. I'm like, what are you fighting against? Development of your stuff? See, um, I, think, I think I'm extremely lucky in this sense because, um, honestly speaking, you know, obviously I, I launched the company. So, you know, in the beginning, I was the only one on sales and, you know, I'm, I'm, I was doing all the job. I, 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 uh, I landed my first 60 clients. Imagine how many pitch I had to do to land uh, 60 clients. Um, now, there is not once, there is not once ever people told me that, you know, this is, this is not, not for us. We don't need this. People usually sitting with an open mouth and say, man, this is amazing. You know, we really want it. The problem starts with closing the deals, right? Because, you know, again, uh, you know, hotels or uh, individual restaurants or restaurant groups are different, but the sales cycle is extremely long. Why? Because there are so many people involved in a decision making, right? So when it comes to small restaurants, you know, uh, it, it happened to me that, you know, I, I, I closed it on a spot. I, I went for the first pitch. They, they asked me to, to print the paper. They want, they want to start tomorrow. But this, this happened once in, 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 in since I started the company. The average sales cycle, sales cycle is three to six months. Why? Because there are so many people involved, right? So very often I had to, you know, pitch uh, the, 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 the same thing within one company to six, seven different people, six, seven, eight times. And, you know, basically this is what you call from, from bottom up, right? So you start with, I don't know, let's say, uh, in a good case, a restaurant manager, but sometimes I start with a head waiter. Sometimes waiters reaching out, like, can we see the platform because we want to propose it to the management. So I start with a waiter and then the manager and then the GM, but the GM goes, you know what? I, I want my, my head chef to see that. So I pitch it to the head chef. Okay, let's get now HR involved. Okay, so HR see that. Actually, we have an operation director. He's in Hong Kong. He, ne he never been here before, but let's pitch it to him. Okay, so he pitches seven times and then they go, okay, there is one more with the finance. So finance is the one that 80% of the cases are deciding on if they're taking a platform or not. So imagine you go through the whole process and then eventually you're sitting there with a guy and the guy is looking at you like, what is this? Is, is it like Zomato and Deliveroo? No, it's not quite, no, it's, 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 it's not that. It's, this is a training platform. This is for internal communication and training and you know, allowing your stuff to, 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 you know, to, to, to communicate within departments and within, and, 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 you know, finance looking at you like, why is it costing so much money? You know, they don't even comprehend that this is an investment, right? You know, so I think that the main challenge is really to convert um, an intangible asset into business because what we're selling is a platform that potentially going to save you money allow you to make more money, right? Basically, we want to turn a, a better uh, return on investment on, on your human resources. 
and then you know your, your your company half. So basically, you know this is this is affecting the whole business from A to Z, from from average check until you know your staff turnover. You stop printing paper, so our our cost is coming back only on not printing paper, right? Um, but it is a cost, right? It is a cost, and you know we we, we also charge upfront. So obviously, I think I think to you to, to tell people that listen, you're gonna make this money back. You know, I think this is the hardest point because no manager ever say, Janos, we don't need this." Everybody says straight away, "Oh my god, when can we start?" Most of my meeting finishing, "When can we start?" And I always say the same thing: discuss with your boss. So sometimes, right? Let, let me just go into this because this is very interesting. So you can go bottom up, right? You start with the management and you work your way up to the decision makers. In my line of business, they say you should go to the to the to the decision maker straight away, right? So so basically you, you convince one person instead of going through the whole ladder. Now what we experienced is that when, you know, sometimes I, I I managed to get hold of the CEO or the operation director or the AJ director or you know the decision maker. And they say, you know what, this is amazing. I know we have this problem in the in, in, in the company. And actually we're gonna go for that and I'm gonna pull it through. And and sometimes they do, right? Now they implementing a platform, suddenly the CEO sending out an email, hey guys, next Friday we have an onboarding. I'm introducing Janos, he's the founder of Pocket Trainer, he's gonna do the onboarding. We have this amazing platform, we do this for the stop development. But your management didn't buy into the idea yet. They are told that listen, you're not doing your job well, therefore I am buying you a platform and you're going to have to use it. So what happening is that people never ever use the platform because the management is not on board with it. So it is very tricky, right? Because at the end of the day, you need to sell the idea on a company level. We just talked about it. You can have the the the, the most beautiful LMS platform which sing songs and 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 you play Tetris and everything, right? But if the management didn't buy into the idea and they're not pushing it to 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 use it, you know, it's it's not going to work. So there are many, many different layers. You need to you need to convince an organization as a whole. Sometimes you're lucky because the CEO actually managed to, to convince the organization that, guys, we need this. This is going to help, you know. But this is very, 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 very rarely the case because the CEO has other things to do, you know, or the operation director have other things to do. And then once they made a decision, they push the button, they, they never get into it anymore. You know, I just actually have a, a call today, right, with a CEO who, the exact same scenario, I met the CEO, he knew me, he knew what I'm doing, he bought it for the whole company globally, and we miserably failed. They, they, they were one of my first clients. And, you know, I met them now in Saudi Arabia, and he's telling me that, you know, I'm, I'm not happy with the decision that we stopped because I know that it is not the platform, I know this is us. So I want to do a relaunch. So now, actually, today I'm, I'm doing a relaunch with them, and I'm trying to convince them for the second time again. But again, you know, if you go through from the bottom and you explain them the benefits and then you show them, listen, it is going to make your life easier. You know, it is all about making your life easier. I always wanted to develop a platform that is make people's life easier because, you know, people in hospitality work a lot harder than many can imagine. People don't understand how hard, how hard it is to work in hospitality. So if people don't feel that it is going to help me, you know, they, they're not going to buy into it. They're not, they're not going to do that. They're going to consider this as an, as, an, as an extra duty to do. Oh, now I need to, now I need to maintain pocket trainer as well. It's an extra duty. They don't, they don't think that on the long run it's going to save me tons of time. My stuff going to develop faster. They're going to love me more. My business is going to be more healthier. I may get more bonus, more tips. It's, it's, you know, so it's very important to, you know, come with the whole, the whole organization. It's very, very important. But again, just come back to, you know, the main challenge is really to get the ball running, you know, and 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 it's, it's, it's all depends in this honeymoon period in the beginning, you know, did people buy in or not? We have clients who sign up, they start to pay and they, they after two months, I don't have the training content to, to get started with the onboarding and I'm keep pressing them, the guys send me the stuff, I, I, I want to make sure that your stuff is able to use it and they don't even get to this level. Why? Because they didn't buy into the idea. The, the CEO decided, but the mid management didn't buy into the idea. They still don't know what it is. So, so yeah, I could I could talk about this quite a bit. There are uh, there are different. I know, I know. It's a difficult one because it's really going back to the user end uh, or the end user experience, right? Um, who is going to use that platform? Can we ask their opinion? If it's, do you guys want to have it? 
explain it to them. How would that help? So it's not that one person is making a decision in here, whether it is the bottom or the up. Everybody needs to be on part uh, in part of that decision making process. And and really, but those people who are going to use that, because if they say, you know what, we do need that. Now that that saying needs to be challenged. Everything needs to be challenged within organizations, and I'm I'm okay with that. But it's really if your line managers, your restaurant managers, your waiters, your hydrators tell you that look, this is what it could do to us, do for us, then the CEO should listen to the stuff, right? And maybe is is not that. Because I always said that most of the knowledge is in the bottom of the organization, not at the top. They have no idea what's going on, you know, no idea what's going on. And they are the big decision makers. So even if the CEO, good for you, if you want to put something in that. But can you see your person go and speak to your staff? Because you need to have the dialogue. You need to have your understanding that what they want, how would they have? If they say no, why are they saying that no? Maybe they don't even understand the system. So it could be so much, but it's definitely it's communication across the board, right? And also, I think, you know, I, I and I agree with you, finance is the ultimate, is like a god of decisions, right? In organizations. And that drives me crazy for many reasons. But one of them is you are a support function, okay? If your job as a finance person, if the, all you can provide is a no, well, you are an accountant, not the finance, because finance, go and find the, the find the money. This is what we need. So that's my approach to finance. If you can't find it, well, be an accountant, not a finance person. And the second part is that if you are a support function, and this is also for corporate offices, I always had this very good understanding, also for, also for corporate office staff, um, also for any support function that supports the person who is selling that burger, who is making that bed, who is making, bringing the money into the business. If your job is not to support one of that, that those people within the organization, you are not doing your job. And once we understand that support functions are there to support the receptionist, the waiter, the hostess, the housekeeping, then we make very, very different decision because we don't have that. What we have is that barrier in between support function. And you know what this five, uh, the five guy burger guy said, um, I was just listening to his podcast and I really love what, um, what he was saying. And he always said the same thing in different language he was talking about his back office. You know, it's a very lean structure. He says, 99% of my staff is on the front. I'm not interested in people sitting in the back. And, you know, of course, you need to have a structure within the organization that supports what he said. And he says that to, to his support staff. If you are not here to support the guy who is selling the burger, you don't need to be here. And I think that's my message to everybody. Uh, whoever is, you know, supporting operational staff, basically the ones who are bringing money into the business, if you are not there to support those people, you really don't need to be there. It's very similar to what my ex was say. You know, he's, he's always said the same thing. You know, I think it's good to have, I think, uh, you know, this is actually, there's a good thing and a bad thing in it, right? So this is the old mindset, right? I, I'm not going to say old mindset. I would say the old school mindset of, you know, be on the floor, right? do things with your hand or think or help or do something that bring money in. So I, my, my ex boss used to say that, you know what, I, I, I don't need people in the office. They, they, they don't they make me any money, right? So unless you are, I don't know, marketing manager or whatever that you're thinking about how to pe get people into the business. So it is, it is very important, right? Now, I think cross exposure can help this a lot. You know, uh, some of my companies did that. So it doesn't matter what, what, what position you are. If you are a finance, you start in a kitchen two days. And then you and then you're polishing plates for 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 a day, and then you go to the bar, you know. And it is happening on purpose because you know these companies want a finance or, or any other position to feel the pain, you know. These guys because then you will think differently, you know. When you polish there for a the whole day, and you know these guys are asking for a for a for a dishwashing machine, you're gonna think, mm, yeah, man, it's a shit, you know. I hated it, you know. It, it's just horrible. I you, yeah, I could do it for one day, but I, I could not do it for months and years, you know. So. It changes your perspective. So just coming back to, to the previous question, you know, why is it a challenge? Because 
you know, when sometimes when people think this way that, you know, we don't need office people, we don't need LMS, you know, so it, it, it is kind of hitting you back also because then you're not open. You, you're thinking all the way that, you know, I used to be a waiter for 40 years before I become a manager. And, and you know, you it's, it's good in a way because you, 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 your priorities are right. You're focusing on your, on your line stuff, right? You, you're trying to enable them and give them the tools, not too many office people. So it's good. But very often it hits you back because you are not open for, for the evolution of the business, right? So I'm not saying that, you know, hospitality need to completely revolutionize and uh, pocket chain and is everybody pocket and, and whatever, you know, it's depending on your organization. But you need to evolve with the business, you know, you, you, you need to evolve with the, uh, with the with the industry and, and and have an open mind. So you know, I absolutely agree. You know, I think I think some organizations have way too many people in the office, way too many. You're sitting on way too many meetings. That is irrelevant. Um, it's just way too long. It is it is it is. You know, there, there is no outcome. It is organized. That is in your calendar because it's a there's a weekly recurrence, and then you're doing it. But it just it just it just no outcome of it. You know, you're sitting on these meetings. And, and, and not talking about important, you're not talking about your stuff. You know, I always hated, you know, even when I was uh, in a corporate level, when you, when, you, when you go on meetings and then you start with the numbers, you know, you're talking about the numbers and then, you know, how, how, how are we going to make this number? You know, no money has ever been made by talking about it, right? Money is an end result of your efforts in terms of service, food quality, um, many things, right? So the only thing really, again, I'm coming back to the same thing you need to talk about, how to help the staff to, to do a better service, right? How to help the chef to cook better food? How, what, 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 what can we do for them? And it's not always a mindset of, you know, providing a tool or buying a better oven or I don't know. Should we, should we I don't know, people look burnt out or people, people don't seem to be like to work here. Should we should we should we invest a bit of money in a in a yearly stuff party? I don't know. You know, should we should we do something for them so you know they they stay longer because our stuff turnover is three hundred percent, right? So again, it is difficult. It is difficult, but you know what? And as you said, it's not the tool. It's never the tool. It's always the mindset. As much as I like training and all that, you know, I always said and. And I'll give you an example I really liked, and I'm trying to invite him for my, for my vlog, Deepa Kori, the CEO of Labua Hotels. Uh, he's a fantastic guy. And one day, three years ago, maybe, I was listening to one of his um, interviews. And he said, so let me just paint the picture. He has Labua Hotels, Bangkok, and within that property, three Michelin star restaurants, 70 Michelin stars all together. I mean, top end, top end, top end of everything. And during this interview, he says, I don't have training department. I don't need anybody to come and train my staff because one training manager can't train 1,300 staff. And I'm like, what? As an LND person, I'm like, you cannot, cannot not have a training department. And then he elaborates and he says, your greatest trainer are your uh, guests. They will tell you immediately what you don't know. And the line managers are the ones who are training the employees. So if Michelin star restaurants can do without training a department, without trainers, of course they must have resources, you know, uh, um, but making it happen, with the line managers, then everybody else can. And this is, you know, sometimes training, removing training department from the managers, it maybe helps because managers are relying on L&D and training. Oh, they are here, they're supposed to train your train my staff. But my, my, my thing is always, if I need to come into your department or your manager or your restaurant and train your staff on the job that you are going to supervise, then we have a problem because I don't need you there. It's literally your job to train your staff on the immediate jobs that they need to do. So it's, it's, it's the time. It's the time, isn't it? It's not the resources. It's not the tools. It's not the LMS. It's, not, it's really the mindset of the managers and the time that they invest in their people. And that makes a difference. And you know what? Deepak Corey also fired his entire marketing team and sales team 
back in the days from one day from one minute to another he fired the entire sales team because they were not bringing clients in and today and then he went moved Labua onto the digital platform it was back at the days when when booking.com started to uh, boom and he said you guys my stuff so it's going back to what you just said you are my sales person and the hotel staff's job is to provide an experience that when you go there you will store, start talking to everybody about so then they bring in the money and that's where i would like restaurants and hotels to get to because if one hotel can do it we all can do it it's not difficult it's down to the managers it's always down to managers people like it or not it's always down to the management so you know i i don't think it's not about as well right uh, it's not about that you're good or bad you always can be better right um again but becoming better the same problem that you know nine out of ten managers have been promoted from line stuff and this is a stigma that i think not getting enough attention that's you know very often actually almost all the times so you promote the best waiter to be a manager you promote the best bartender to be a bar manager and it is just not you know not the right decision sometimes right it is tricky because you want to reward the one that's you know um uh, deserving the most right you are the best waiter you are you are, you are fantastic but you you know you, you're naturally not the person who can actually look after people because that's the thing once you get up to management your job is entirely changing you don't have to serve more people you don't have to be quick in a dispense bar you don't have to be a fantastic cook you have to give the tools for your people to, to reach your level right you have to manage people's emotion you have to be able to speak uh, differently to different people you have to suddenly start work with computers you know rota stock take training you know just because you are a good server it doesn't mean you are a good trainer right so it is a journey right but i absolutely agree with that that you know i went through that myself as well when i when i when i get my trainer role and when i get my uh, corporate role uh you know i could see a lot of misfunctioning and and my ceo and my my, my old director they they noticed this you know and they kind of put it back on me and then it, it was blamed on me and, and i had to say they are right you know because it, I wouldn't say it was my fault, but the message wasn't clear enough because people thought, okay, now we have a training manager. Now my job is, 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 is no more training. We have a training manager to do that. So everybody expected me to do all the trainings. So it wasn't clearly communicated that this guy is here to help you, right? To work on training materials and provide stuff. That, so you still need to execute your training because you are the role model. So, you know, it was good for me in a sense because I got tremendous respect from my staff because I really knew all the departments inside out. I, you could not ask me anything I didn't know. But the organization this wasn't functioning because the management stopped doing trainings. They, they, they didn't get the respect as before because there's a thing, you see, the stuff is, is, is fluctuating, right? It's, it's keep changing. So when you come into the business, you know, there is a guy who's keep telling you, do this, do that, your manager, right? You have to do this uh, opening duties and, you know, Somebody, somebody giving you constantly bamboo. So it is fine as long as you can respect it. But if you've never seen this guy, you know, showing that he actually knows what he's talking about, you're not going to respect it. What's the point to respect a, a trainer, a, 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 you know, a hotel trainer or a, or, a, or a corporate trainer, one person in the whole company, and then you have 10 managers you don't respect. So again, you know, it will show on a service. It will show on a service. But I don't completely agree because I think a training manager can do wonders with a company. Again, if it's if it's communicated to the to the to the management that this guy is not here to do your job, his guy is here to give you tools so you can do your job better and faster, and then you don't waste time on on on, on, on creating training content and materials and whatever or onboarding. You know, onboarding is a is a is a is a sensitive period. You need somebody to actually spend time. The head of department don't have time to spend a full day or two with one employee because there is operation to run. There are things to do. There are guests coming in. So, I think again, it is in. The, the balance again how the, the organization is set up so you know you can go without training manager but maybe you need an extra manager on the floor still to you know to, to cover the gaps and i don't know what not but um i think i think i think a training manager can be wonders especially if he has a tool and if he has the backup from the top management and you know uh, has the backup to to do his job properly without you know going a million million ways apart so 
depends on how you present it. Depends on the mindset. As you said, depends on the mindset, you know? What is the mindset of the top leader? How is it communicated down? Do people share the same opinion? It's, it's, it's all about the mindset. Absolutely. I, I, I would always support to have somebody who is helping train the managers to, to facilitate training and make training happen because that's the role of a L&D person, right? right? Or training manager. Support those line managers who are in charge of their employees' success. And that's, that's the job. And that's a collaboration. It's yeah. not that, you know, it's either this or that. So I think we can, we can close it on that. It's really a teamwork. Everybody has to be on board. Otherwise, training, just one trainer, one training manager, one training application. As we say in Hungary, one bird doesn't do make summer, okay. right? Um, and, and, you know, one person will never make a difference. But if you guys are all rally around training and the idea of developing your people, E-learning can be very, very, very um, supportive of what is happening and, and demonstrated by the staff on the floor because that is a fantastic tool, all of these e-learnings. But we need to know how to use that, like with everything else. Thank you so, so much for your time. It was a lovely conversation. I, we could, I think we could go on for hours and hours and hours about training. But um, yes, and I will put it in the in the comments how they can find you if they are interested in Pocket uh, Trainer. It's a fantastic application and that is specific for the organization and for your restaurant. Okay. So it's not some generic thing Thanks provided so by day. those big ones out there. It's specific so your staff knows what's in that particular dish. And don't be afraid of giving that information because we talked about that sometimes people are scared of what they are going to steal the recipe. Nobody is going to steal the recipe and you can find every single recipe online, okay? You are not cooking some trade secrets. It's a <laughs> you are not Coca-Cola. You don't need to be afraid of that. Well, thank you so much and um, speak to you soon. Mm -hmm.